Hello and Ooh, nearly flushed you. <laughs> Good start. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm filming a little bit of a different video today because I'm not gonna lie, I've just absolutely failed at weekly vlogging this week. I submitted my dissertation last Thursday and ever since my energy, my focus, my motivation, everything has just gone very downhill. So I'm feeling a bit out of it altogether, which isn't great because I do have exams starting next week, but I just needed a few days to recuperate and for the adrenaline <laughs> to wear down because I think without realizing for the last few weeks while I was finalizing my diss, my body was literally in like fight or flight. And I knew that because I wasn't really sleeping at night very well, but then the adrenaline was basically keeping me going during the day. And then as soon as I submitted after a day or so, of course that all started to wear off. Off. But tonight I'm going to the Business School Society annual ball, which is something that I've never been to before, despite being part of the society my whole time at uni and being on the committee in my second year. I thought I'd also talk you through the makeup that I'm doing because I'm really enjoying a natural glowy look at the moment and I feel like I'm getting pretty good at it, not to toot my own horn. I received this primer from Glow Recipe the other day as well, so I'm gonna give it a go it's the strawberry bha pore smooth blur drops pore refining and blurring but the business school balls in my first and second year both got cancelled because of covid i was then in copenhagen in my third year so this is the first year that i've actually managed to go to it for those of you that don't really know what happens at these events to be honest i'm not really sure what's going to happen either it's normally a meal so i think we've got like a three course meal or something and then there's a dance floor it's kind of giving school disco vibes but obviously with alcohol because there's wine on the table and also a bar I think. I like the feeling of this actually. It gives a really nice kind of tacky feel to your skin. I thought I would also do a little Q&A in this video otherwise I will just sit here and ramble on about nothing. <laughs> a lot of people were asking how it feels to finish my diss and I guess I've already kind of answered that but in terms of how I'm feeling now, apart from tired, honestly, not much different. I feel like I'm only really gonna start processing that I finished it once I finished everything and that will be on June the 1st. But even then, I'm moving out of Leeds pretty soon after going traveling for a month, then it's graduation, then I'm moving somewhere abroad. So I don't know. I don't know when I'm gonna process the fact that I'm finishing this, but currently, I definitely haven't. So that kind of leads on to another very frequently asked question, which I always get to be fair, and that is what on earth <laughs> am I doing after uni? And I kind of want to do a whole video about this more in depth in the future, probably around the time that I'm graduating, but I'll give you a vague idea. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Although you literally couldn't tell because all of the writing always comes off Charlotte Tilbury products. So I'm not initially going into any sort of formal employment. I'm remaining self-employed, which is what I am now doing at social media. But I am looking to take on some form of project, whether or not that's voluntary work, whether or not that's starting up a business. Because as much as I love social media, I'm just not 100% sure that I could do it full time without going insane because I've always done it alongside being a student. I've always been a full-time student doing part-time social media and I really like that. I think it's a good balance and it keeps social media fun for me. I think if I was focusing on it full-time, your life just then revolves around how many likes you're getting, how many views you're getting. So I am in a very fortunate position where essentially I'm gonna kind of wait and see. I'm gonna have at least a bit of time to chill after uni and then decide if I wanna take up part-time work, full-time work, 
do social media full time and I mentioned this in a vlog a few weeks ago but I am moving abroad. Once again I'm not going to say where until closer to the time but it's somewhere very exciting although it's only for three months initially and then we're thinking of moving somewhere else after three months. I'm just putting the Kosas concealer on. I think that's how you say it, Kosas. I haven't really been doing foundation recently, but I've really been enjoying this to cover the areas where I do want a bit of coverage. I feel like I'm really mastering my rosy cheeks as well. I've been essentially putting a line of concealer here and then leaving this kind of red bit out a bit. And it's basically like natural blush. That's what I've been finding to be the key to achieving a kind of natural no makeup makeup look you want to make sure that some of your skin is still showing so for me that's been kind of this area of my cheeks and also i really don't put a lot of product on my forehead once again leading on from that question i thought this was a really interesting one so olivia asked do you think being in a relationship has had a big impact on your decision making especially thinking post-graduation and i don't think that this is something people really talk about that often but it definitely does make a difference because if you're planning on moving in with that person after uni or just staying with them I guess in general you do have to come to some sort of decision on what you're going to do and it's likely that in some way that is going to be a compromise because I was thinking what would I have done actually if I wasn't with Sid and I think honestly I would have moved straight back to Copenhagen <laughs> which I do want to do at some point again but I think Sid has kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone but in a good way after uni you know we're doing something that's definitely not the most comfortable option for both of us it's definitely not the safest option definitely not the easiest option we're both going to be self-employed living somewhere abroad and I feel like if it wasn't for him I would probably seek the safety, I guess, of going back to Copenhagen or moving somewhere familiar like London or Manchester. Does anyone remember that I used to film this kind of video all the time when I was in sick form and I would always spill the most tea in them for no reason and it would always come back to bite me in the butt as well because obviously people that I went to sick form with watched the videos. That is something that I feel like has changed a bit over the last few weeks. I do find myself getting quite nostalgic and quite sentimental. The day that I handed my dissertation in, I spent a good few hours watching my A-level exam vlogs for some reason. I think maybe because that was the last life stage that I completed, if you know what I mean. So it was really interesting to compare the person that I was back then to the person that I am now and it was also quite reassuring because a lot has changed since then in a very good way like when I was watching those vlogs I'm so insecure I was getting so upset over things that really didn't matter in the grand scheme of things and I don't think I was very happy to be honest whereas I feel like now I'm really finishing uni with a good sense of self especially in final year I mean I've spoken about this so much recently but I feel like I've really started to put my foot down and prioritize what makes me happy and not what I think I should be doing or what other people are doing oh yeah I completely forgot to say I've just put the milk makeup bronzer on and you might have noticed that I use it in a slightly strange way I prefer dabbing it because if I swipe it I find that it moves everything under it. But something that's also made me so sentimental recently is the amount of you in the comments of my dissertation TikTok or my reels saying, oh my God, I've been here since your GCSEs and now look. And that is crazy to me because I've been doing this for six years now. Like it was my six year anniversary on YouTube a few weeks ago. And the fact that some of you have been there the whole time is incredible. Like I really feel like you guys are my friends because you have really seen me go through all of it. But also it does make me kind of sad that this era, I guess, of my social media is coming to an end because I don't know what I'm gonna do afterwards to be completely honest. I would love to still make content, but what on? 
I'm not sure yet. And lots of people ask like, are you doing a master's? Are you staying on for further education? And there's part of me that almost wants to just so I can keep this stage of my life going for longer. And you know, I can be a student content creator for longer, but I just don't feel like that's the right reason <laughs> to be doing a master's. Like it's gotta be something that I'm passionate about, especially because they are so expensive. Okay, moving on from talking about dissertation and uni stuff. Someone asked, why have you gotten into running? As much as I do love the glowy makeup look, I'm gonna set my face a little bit with some Laura Mercier powder because otherwise I do look so shiny. I'm just gonna put some under my eyes here. Ooh, we are looking crusty in that area. Okay, glow recipe. I love you, but this product is not working for me. It is peeling my makeup away, kind of. Like, it's gone really patchy, and it could be another product, but I've used all of my products before, and this has never happened, so... Okay, brief interlude. Sorry if the angle slightly changed. I just had to go and sort that out. But luckily, I'm running quite ahead of my own schedule, so we've got time. I've just decided that I'm gonna set my bronzer a bit with the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow because this shade here is quite a good cool toned contour shade for me. So it actually adds a bit of shape on top of the bronzer. I don't know why I'm acting like I'm a makeup guru <laughs> in this video. I don't know what's come over me. I also do not remember the question that I was talking about. So hopefully I have actually finished answering that one. Oh wait, were we gonna talk about running? I feel like I was and then I never actually got onto it. Quickly though, before I do, the next step of my routine has recently been brown mascara. Although this one may as well be black. It doesn't really give the subtle effect that I'm looking for. So let me know if you've got any good light brown mascara recommendations. Like, can you see? Like, that may as well be black, I think. So the reason that I've actually got into running recently is because a few months ago, Sid decided that he wants to run a marathon. And in December, we're going to visit my friends who live in Hawaii. So he wants to do the Honolulu marathon while we're there, which is great good for him but the competitive person inside of me was like well if you're running a marathon i feel the need to do something and i can't run a marathon i I'm not a runner. So that was a bit ambitious. However, they were doing a 10K starter race. So you run the first 10K with the people that are doing the marathon. And obviously you'll be at slightly different speeds and whatnot, but it's still the same route at the same time. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll do that. And I just thought it'd be a fun little challenge. Running has been one of those things that I've always said I will get into and I've always wanted to. I just never have for some reason so this just felt like the perfect time and I never really saw the hype with it before but since I've started doing it I get why everyone runs because the endorphins from it are insane. I've never experienced endorphins like it from any other sport. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna regret this and it kind of defeats the object to putting brown mascara on, but I'm just gonna put some coal, I think it's called, under my lashes just because I feel like they look a bit top heavy. I don't know if you can really see a difference, but it just makes them look a little bit more voluminous, I think. Is that the word? <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury coal liner, by the way. I've somehow gone from having more than enough time to not enough time at all. So I'm quickly going to do my last step and wrap this video up. This is the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. And recently I've just been running this through my brows and not really doing a whole lot else with them. I'll put a little bit of pencil in them. I've been using the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. Okay, I'm forgetting multiple final last steps. So I'm also really enjoying the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. It's the only setting mist I found that is actually a mist and not physical water that is going on your face, if you know what I mean. And I'm not really sure what lip 
products to go with. I also don't know where any of them are, so... Okay, my battery is literally dying, but I'm gonna put on the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk and the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Gloss. And I'm sure you'll see a photo of my dress and the finished look on my Instagram. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe for lots more content and also follow my Instagram and my TikTok. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!